All right, so at this point, we've uh, yeah, been introduced to the uh, era of uh, growing industry in the late 1800s. And uh, with that introduction, we, we have already gotten into two major industries and how they began. And those industries are the uh, oil business and also the steel industry. Now, there's a lot more to come on both uh, the oil business and the steel industry throughout the chapter, specifically on the two men that we associate most with uh, those two businesses. With oil, who do we associate with growing that business and becoming the, the big uh, wealthy industrialist? Some of you got it, J.D. Rockefeller. And with the steel industry, who did we say we're gonna learn more about later as the, the tycoon that sort of takes over the steel industry? Andrew Carnegie. All right, good. So more to come on those guys. Today, we're going to meet two other powerful, wealthy industrialists of the era, but the business that they were in is electricity. So today we get to talk about electric power. If you're going to talk about electricity, really in any way, shape, or form, in any era, in any time period, uh, this is a guy whose name always uh, comes into the con uh, conversation. And that is Thomas Edison. My guess is that at this point, uh, you've learned, uh, you know the name for sure. You probably know that he invented what? The light bulb, but there's a lot more to it than just that. Uh, and so he is just synonymous with any discussion of electricity, especially when you start discussing the birth of electricity in the late 1800s. So here we go with a little bit about Thomas Edison. Uh, I always say this to my students, um, uh, if I could just, uh, back when I was a young man, and I was all, you know, trying to impress women or something like that. Uh, and I wish I could say that whenever you meet somebody and they say, hey, what do you do for a living? I always wish I could just say, I'm an inventor. I don't even know what that means that that's your job, that you just go to work and invent things. But it sounds pretty cool, right? This guy could do that. He was an inventor. He was, in many ways, the inventor of his time certainly the way history has portrayed it as well. There were a lot of other people that, that probably haven't gotten the, the, the name and face recognition as Thomas Edison, but, uh, and, and might have deserved more. We'll meet one of them today, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve the recognition that he, he got, uh, because this guy was an inventor. It's what he did. He got up in the morning, he went to work, and he sat there and he said, hmm, what can I invent today? And he invented things. Now, I'm trivializing it slightly, but that is what happened. So much so that I like to say, that, and I'm not the only one says this, is that he set up an invention factory in Menlo Park, New Jersey. Today, there's a historic landmark there. It's a, I've never been there to visit. It's on my bucket list. But uh, in that factory, he literally had employees. He paid people where, where he would start to think of something and give them some, some blueprints or some sketches and say, I want you to sit and work on this and see if you can figure it out. And in that invention factory over a long period of time, he invents thousands of things. Within the first years, a few years of, of Edison's company being open and, and him inventing things, he has uh, issued hundreds of patents on all kinds of new inventions. Some things uh, that you've heard of, probably others that I'm not even aware of and didn't even know that existed or that he invented them, right? Uh, the big dog is the light bulb. That's the one that everybody associates with uh, Thomas Edison. But if you were to start looking at some of the things that his name is associated with and having invented, you would see other things that you recognize as well. But we got to put in our notes uh, that he did invent the filament light bulb. The filament light bulb is that traditional, uh, the light bulb that we saw on that first slide. Let's take a look at it again. Oh. This guy right here, the, the traditional, it's the glass bulb. In fact, today we're starting to see these fade, uh, fade away a little bit, but they're still out there. The glass bulb, there are two metal filaments that uh, are inside this. When they are heated with electricity and they get hot, they glow inside that globe and they make light. This was the, the beginning of all the different kinds of light bulbs that we have today with uh, LEDs and incandescent and fluorescent. So when we talk about him inventing the light bulb, a picture in your head is that picture right there. All right. Another 
big invention uh, is the central power plant. It was this was his idea to to once he he started a company that had ways to harness electricity, generate it, and then produce it for the masses. He came up with the idea of building the central power plant. Prior to that, when we started to get into this world of, of, of understanding electricity and knowing how to use it, people could have individual generators in their home or in their business, and they could generate light or electricity to, to run light bulbs. But who do you think had those individual generators in their houses and in their businesses? It was the wealthy people, right? But Edison figures out a way to centralize this. And it's, his idea is still pretty much the way we do it today. Uh, uh, right now, your house where you're out watching this or this building where I'm at uh, videoing this, there is electricity here that's being piped from maybe hundreds or even thousands of miles away from some centralized power plant that distributes it. That was his idea. Also a big game changer in the future of America uh, and in the future of our local region we have the beginning of General Electric. That is the eventual company that he creates in 1893. It's the company that still exists today. Uh, and until recently, it was the company that employed a lot of people here in the Erie area because of uh, the GE Locomotive Center up in the city of Erie. Uh, that has since changed hands. It's no longer a GE facility, but GE is still out there pumping out televisions and, and microwaves and stereo systems and appliances and all kinds of things. Um, and that all started with Thomas Edison. The final bullet that I want to add to uh, the slide of Thomas Edison is uh, the, the bullet for Lewis Latimer. And this is sort of uh, one, a little connection I can make between what we're learning now in this era after the Civil War when industries were growing and changing and new technologies and ideas. But I want to connect it back to what we spent a lot of time talking about, the, the slavery era and then the war and then the reconstruction period and issues between African-Americans and whites. And this, the, the, the example of Lewis Latimer is a really neat positive example of how after the Civil War and, and after the reconstruction period, we start to see some changes, uh, real changes for African-Americans because there he was, a young man. Uh, Lewis Latimer was one of the assistants that worked with Thomas Edison. Uh, a lot of indications say that he actually had a lot to do with the invention of the light bulb, uh, among other things, because he assisted Edison in his work. So that's a cool little example of some changes that are happening pretty quickly in our country after the war is over and after the Reconstruction period for African Americans. They're making uh, legitimate contributions to our, uh, uh, our economy, our culture, and eventually the future of mankind with things like the invention of the light bulb. So there's a little bit about Thomas Edison. You are going to learn a little bit more about him and about his business, uh, about how he operated his business and how he was connected to this era of electricity as you do the war for the current society. I'm going to leave you to do that on your own. I want to introduce you to another man. Uh, that you will also be learning about when you do the war for the current assignment. And that other major player in the world of uh, the new thriving electricity industry was a guy named George Westinghouse. George Westinghouse, as you will learn, is associated with uh, alternating current. So he, he, while Westinghouse and Edison were contemporaries, in fact, they were competitors, Westinghouse sort of comes after, he gets into the game after Edison had already been a major player in the game. Edison operated on something called direct current, George Westinghouse, uh, is, is um, connected to the idea of uh, transfer, um, transferring over to using alternating current. Again, when you do the war for the currents assignment, uh, a lot of that will become more uh, clear to you, okay? Um, well, he started out doing things like Edison did. He uh, invents and figures out ways to create generators and transformers for people to use in their homes. But eventually, he, like Edison, figures out that the central power plant is the way to go. He ends up creating another 
electricity company. To rival GE and to compete with GE, his is called Westinghouse Electric. Uh, some local connections, Westinghouse Electric was born in, in a local city. Again, you'll re read a little bit about that and find out where it was centered. Um, and eventually, these two will compete with one another. Uh, and we're gonna find out that in the end, Westinghouse is going to get the upper hand and his victory of sorts in, the, in this battle that the two of them engage in comes uh, in a couple different things, but one of the things is at the 1893 World's Fair. So uh, in these days, and even still today, we still have World's Fairs that happen in different parts of the world in different years, but it was a big deal uh, in the late 1800s. And there was a World's Fair in 1893 in Chicago. One of the more sort of historically significant world fairs that, that has ever taken place. And one of the reasons it was such a big deal was because it was the first time that electricity was not only going to be introduced to the masses as something that, that might really affect our future, but it was the first time that electricity was going to power the world's fair itself. So all the buildings, all the walkways, and the lamps, and the, the lights were all going to be powered by electricity for, for the first time. And so the World's Fair was out there looking for different companies that, would prov that, that thought they could provide electricity for this massive World's Fair on these huge fairgrounds. And Westinghouse Electric won the bid to do that. And when he did that, his name sort of blew up as, as the guy that, was, uh, that, that had created all this. Um, by the time we get near the turn of the century, by 1898, there are thousands of power stations run by his company, Westinghouse, and investors start flocking into this industry and the, the business takes off from there. But um, Edison's uh, company, General Electric, had to keep up as well, and eventually we have uh, other competing uh, electricity companies, not just Westinghouse and GE, uh, all over the country, kind of um, essentially lighting our country and eventually the world. So there's a little bit about the two men that we associate most with the birth of the electricity industry and the impact that this new change has is, it's hard to even really fathom. Uh, but it created all kinds of new job opportunities, jobs that never existed before. For example, um, there was never a light bulb factory worker. Well, when this happened, and we invented light bulbs, and Edison's company started manufacturing them, it created new jobs that didn't exist before, light bulb manufacturing. But it also created new job opportunities in terms of allowing us to work more than um, you know, one or two shifts in a day, because now we can just turn lights on in factories and in businesses and in companies, uh, and we could uh, work all day. New businesses themselves were created. There was no light bulb business before this. Now there's a light bulb business and so on and so forth, all kinds of new inventions. Uh, the days start to get longer, as I said, we could work more hours. Uh, we see the birth of refrigeration. We see new um, electric sewing machines. The reason I throw that particular one in there as, as an example is because we learned a lot in the early days of the Industrial Revolution about what industry being one of the first ones to really get us into this era the textile industry. So now we're able to, to sew using uh, electricity. And uh, like many of the inventions and the new technologies of the time, it really changed our standard of living. Uh, individual Americans' lives were affected greatly with the impact of electricity. Um, unfortunately, that's not, uh, that takes a while, I guess. Not everybody benefited from electricity in, it, in its immediate uh, birth into the, uh, the world. Um, of course, uh, as I already indicated, the first people that can have lights in their houses, for example, and have personal generators were gonna be the wealthy. But even after central power stations enabled uh, entire cities to be lit for much lower costs, and it became something that modest people and maybe even uh, people that were on the, the, the bottom of the economic ladder had access to, and that was pretty good. But even then, there were still always uh, either rural areas or impoverished areas or just certain places where elect electricity um, wasn't getting to yet. Heck, there's still parts of our uh, country today 
uh, parts of our state, parts of our county where internet access isn't available, right? So think about, it's kind of a similar thing. In the early days of electricity, there were certainly gonna be some people that weren't going to get the benefits of it. But eventually we know uh, uh, that this changed the future of mankind, really, not just here in the United States. Okay, so at this point now, we've talked about three major businesses, the oil industry, the steel industry, and now a little bit uh, with the electricity business. More to come as we continue through this chapter.